hello. So this video is going to be about adding additions to rain to make rain look hopefully better. I want to preface everything I'm about to go over in this video with this is not creating a dynamic water simulation that you would find in like Blender that simulates water running down the screen. We're making a kind of loose representation of that with a few particle systems. So you can probably do something with actual dynamic water rendering somehow, but you would have to create a shader from scratch. So what we're making is a couple, I think there are one, two, three, four, there are five particle systems in this scene right now. Uh, the ones you will notice immediately are the drips running down the screen, the dots appearing on the screen, the rain in the background, and then if I zoom in the ground here, there are water impact splashes. So uh, these are two particle systems, and everything else is one particle system each. So there are five total, and I'm going to go over making each of these. By the end of this, you should be able to come up with something similar to this. Okay, so to start, I'm going to create a new project. Call it Rain Demo. Doesn't matter. And I'm going to use the same picture. I'm just going to rebuild the wallpaper that I was just showing. So we're going to add this wallpaper in. This is our starting point. And the first and easiest one to add is the rain. So that is a built in default perspective rain or rain perspective. So I'm going to add it in, and this picture already has rain in the background, so all I'm going to do is rotate this, and that's it. There's no other changes I want to make to this particle system. It is the default rain. Um, to separate it slightly from our screen rain, I'm going to add a blur layer, and I don't want to add the blur. Well, first off, the blur is completely optional. You don't need to add it. I want to make it look like you're looking through a wet window. So I'm going to add a blur, and then the rain that's hitting the window will be in focus, and everything else will be out of focus. So I could add a blur to this, but I also want the rain to be blurred. So instead, I'm going to add a full screen layer, and then add a precise blur to that. And I'm going to change the kernel size to make it bigger. And then you can adjust how much blur you want with the slider. So I'm just going to blur it slightly. So now the rain particle system is blurred and the background is blurred. So the next system we're going to add is the rain drops on the ground. To do that, we're going to add an asset and we're going to add the magic pulse. The magic pulse creates this little shock wave, which is pretty much exactly what we need. Now the changes we're going to make to this depend heavily on your picture. So like, we're going to be matching the angle of the ground here, but if your picture is at a different perspective, you, the numbers I'm gonna give you won't line up. So to start, we're going to edit our magic pulse. When you're working with a default effect, you always want to make a copy of it, because if you don't, then the next time you reload this wallpaper, it's going to override any changes you made with the defaults because you're just reloading the default asset. Um, so you always want to make a change. So I'm going to call this water splash. And you can do that by pressing this copy button at the top. Now we need to make a few changes to this. So the first one we're going to do is get rid of sphere random and go to box random. And we want to make a grid that's, uh, I don't know, a thousand by 256. Sure, that's fine. We want a whole bunch of rain, so system max count, we'll say 500. And what else do we need? Directions are fine. Lifetime, we want these to last like half a second and just under half a second. So you can't really see what's going on other than this little distortion because the particle we're adding is actually invisible. It just distorts what's behind it. Uh, we don't want movement. We don't want angular velocity. Uh, size change. Yes, we want all of these. So if I start this particle system now, we're going to get these splashes appearing. Except they're playing at different speeds, I think. 
Oh, I'm going to make the lifetime. Oh, that's why I accidentally. 0.3. Okay. Now we have splashes. So just to get an idea of what we're doing, I'm going to increase the opacity so you can see it. And I'm going to increase the count so there's a whole bunch of them. Now we can position them where we want and increase the size of the system so it covers the whole ground and should go about in the middle if I hide it for a second. The ground is this area here, so I'm putting it in the center of the ground area. And now we come back in and we have to add a rotation random, which is under initializers. I'm gonna get rid of the Z rotation because we don't care about that. We want to rotate it uh, horizontally, which is the X axis. So if I just put a one in here, we'll see what that gives us. Now they're leaning back slightly. I don't know how easy that is to tell. You can tell when you're actually doing this because it'll change. Uh, but we need it leaning back even more. So I'm going to go to rotation random 1.5. And now it's almost horizontal. So we've gone too far. We're going to dial it back a little bit. 1.5. Three. So that's like approximately the same. If I put it down here, it looks like it's in line with the ground. So that's the number I'm going to go with. And now I need to make them smaller. So we'll try 20 and I don't know, 15. So now we have a whole bunch of little raindrops, except it's still extending too high. So I'm going to come in here and change the box random to 150. The Y axis here is how tall our square is. So again, if I make a whole bunch of these and make them brighter, you should be able to see that they kind of stop spawning right around here. So I'm just going to lower it down a little bit. So now they all spawn in this front ground area. And I'm going to reduce the opacity, reduce the count to one and go back in. Sorry, there's a lot of particle editing in this demo. I'm going to increase the rate to like 150. And then to make them slightly more visible, we're going to go back into the particle again under the materials section. Under over bright, we're going to brighten the part. You can see as I they get darker this way, and brighter this way. So I'm going to increase it to like 1.6. And now there's a slight white highlight shine. Uh, that might be too much, but for the sake of the demo, it's pretty good. So that's the ground part of the splash. The next thing I'm going to add is a little like water splash, like droplets. So to do that, we're again going to use a starting point, which is the spark effect. So we're going to add it, and we don't actually need the spark effect. So I'm going to come down into the assets, and mine is again unpopulated. So I'm going to reload my project really quick. So we have our uh, project reloaded. I want spark trails, which is this little explosion. I'm just going to change this to black. OK, so we're going to edit the spark trails. So again, we're using a default um, particle. So I'm going to make a copy of it and call it water droplets. Now I want to modify a whole bunch of settings on this. I'm going to start by removing the speed, removing the distance, and changing this to 10. And now I want this movement to be like minus 200-ish. And I want to add a velocity random. Sorry, I'm going over this kind of quickly. But what I'm doing is, so instead of a big like firework type explosion, I want them to all spawn here, then shoot up and come back down, kind of like a water splash. So I'm going to add a velocity random of like 100 and see, now it's kind of like a sploosh. Uh, alpha fade, that's fine. I'm going to get rid of the color random because I just want them to be white. I'm going to add a alpha random so they're partially see-through on like random ones. And I'm going to see what this looks like. So it's going to spawn right here, and I'll reload the system. We get this water splash effect. 
So this particle is edited now. We can delete it. And we're going to go into our pulse effect. And we're going to add that particle as a child. So water droplets, add children, green plus water droplets. And then we're going to change the type to event spawn. So now whenever one of these drops spawns, it will shoot out the little water splash. And there's not enough of them, so we'll increase this to like a thousand. Be very careful when you're messing with these numbers. I have a fairly good computer, but if I were to, actually, I'll do it right now just to see what happens. If I increase, so each one of these particles is spawning one of these splashes. If I increase the count to like a hundred, it really slows down my computer. And I have a very good computer. So if you're working on like a laptop, be very careful with that. Uh, so we're going to go in here. I'm going to shrink this a little bit. And this should be almost exactly what we want. So now we get a little circle spawns and little water droplets come over it. I'm also going to put this behind the blur. I want it slightly less noticeable, so I'm just putting it behind the blur effect. All right, and moving on to, so that's this is three of the five particle systems we made. We made the rain, well, it was default. We made the water droplet on the ground, and we made the water splash that comes out of the droplet. So the other two systems are the running down water and the droplets of water. So one of those is another default particle system. We're going to go into rain. We're going to select rain refractive. And we have to make some changes to this particle system. Uh, so to start, I'm going to make it half as tall y-wise, which is going to compress the whole system vertically. I'm going to make the color white so that there's no blue highlight. I want it to be clear. Then I'm going to edit the particle system. And there's a whole bunch of changes we have to make in here. So I'm going to reduce the trail length from 20 to 3, which will make it more like a drop. And then we're going to get rid of the color random. And I think that's about it for now. So now I'm going to reduce the playback speed. Actually, I'm going to hide the other particles so you can't see them. And we'll make this noticeable. So now you can see these raindrops. So I'm going to reduce the playback speed all the way down to almost nothing. 0 0.02. So you have slow motion rain coming down. Now this rain is special because it's using the particle system's refract setting, which distorts everything behind it. So I'm just going to increase the size of this system so it covers the whole screen, and then greatly increase the size of the raindrops to something like, I don't know, we'll try 8. And reload the particle system. So there's way too many of these. Uh, let's go to 0 0.02. Reload the particle system. Not enough of them. 0 0.1. There's a lot of trial and error and a lot of working with the particle system. So I think this is how many I want. Now I want them to move in the right direction. So back into editing. And I should have made a copy of this, and I'm going to right now because I'm editing a default particle system, and I just told you you should always do that. Uh, rain window one. Okay. Select, and it is rain window one. Okay, so velocity. We want to change the x velocity. I want them to be, in my mind, the wind is blowing to the left. So I'm going to make this the minimum is zero, and the maximum I'm going to go negative. I don't know, 750. Let's see what that looks like. So now, on average, these raindrops should be going down or to the left. Oh, and it changed all of my settings because I updated stuff. So I have to set all of these back to what they were. So something like this, 0 0.02. Make the size like 8. The count, 0.1. Why is my decimal... Okay, and reload the system. You reload the particle system just by pressing the edit button and hitting escape, and it'll reload it. 
So I want them slightly more noticeable. Let's try a five. So I think this is good. We have raindrops coming down. Some of them are going slightly to the left. Now I'm going to rotate our system ever so slightly to the right so they're more on average going to the left. What else do we have in here? Movement, don't need any of these. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of the alpha, or I'm just gonna, so alpha random controls how see-through the particle is. So I'm just going to widen how see-through it can be. So it, they should show up slightly better now. So that's, that's pretty much it for this particle system. And the last particle system we're making is very similar to the one we just made. We're just making our own raindrops because I thought I would add that in as well. So if I turn these back on, we now have rain in the background, we have rain splashes on the ground, and we have water dripping down the window. So to make the last one, I'm going to open up Photoshop and I'll make a, a new 256 by 256 thing. I'm going to make this black so you can see it, and I don't expect anyone to make these. I will upload these images I'm about to make onto um, the description of this video. Uh, so I'm just going to make a circle and fill it with white. And we can delete the background. I'm going to center the circle, and then in Photoshop I'm going to hit Control shift x to liquefy. And so we want a circle, but we don't want it to be like a circular circle. So I'm going to make a off circular circle. It's just distorted slightly because it's a, I don't know, it's a moving raindrop. And I'm going to ever so slightly make it taller so it's more of an oval shape. Uh, okay, and that's pretty much all we have to do there. So I'm going to recenter it in our picture and then blur it a few times. Blur, blur, blur. Now we're going to save as raindrop1. And that puts it right here. And then I have this other application called Lighter, L-A-I-G-T-E-R. Uh, it's, I don't know what its main use is, but I use it because it lets us create normal maps. And I haven't found a better way to do this yet. So I'm just going to use this little application to change the normal map of this. Uh, normal maps are going to let us distort the picture behind what we're making. So all I need to do is create this little normal map and press the export button. And boom, uh, I don't need any of those. Go back into Photoshop, grab our normal map, and I'm just going to clean up the edge of it. I don't think I have to do this, but what I'm going to do is sample this color, make a new layer behind it and paint dump it. So now it's just this color. I'm going to select our previous layer, invert my selection, delete the rough edge of that. So now we have a cleaned up version, roughly, of our normal map. I don't know if you have to do this, I just think it looks slightly better, so I'm doing it. So we have our raindrop, and I'm going to save our normal map. Save as... Raindrop one in replace, and that's going to replace. Uh, now it's going to replace it because I had it open. Okay, so we have our raindrop and we have our raindrop normal map. Back into wallpaper engine. Let's add a new particle system. Uh, where's particle system? There we go. A new basic particle system. We're going to duplicate it. Call it. Rain uh, drop window. I don't know. So we need to get rid of the sphere random. You could keep it. I'm just going to go to box random because all of the other ones are box random. And we'll make this, uh, what, 1200 by 1000. And I'm going to make more of them. Sorry, I'm kind of getting very monotone because I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. So select it, see what we have. Uh, okay, so I'm going to increase this slightly just so it covers the entire area. And then go back into here. 
we want to get rid of the x and y velocity random. So now they will only spawn with a variance going up and down, which is the y. Er, we want to get rid of both of the x's and leave the y, but we want to make the y minimum 0 and the y maximum minus 50. So now they have a tendency to spawn and then fall down. Uh, next thing we're doing is adding a movement. Uh, so movement accelerates them down as they live longer. And that's not really going to matter, but whatever. Add a little bit of drag so it starts that process slower. Uh, we're going to get rid of the color random. And alpha fade, we want them to appear instantly. So set this to zero. They will snap in. And then I want them to fade out, but I want them to fade out much faster. So I'm going to set this to 0.2. So they will hit the window and then kind of fade out of existence. Uh, now we can add our images. So I'm going to select the blend mode of the material to translucent. I'm going to import our texture, which is raindrop. And then I'm going to hit this refract button. And the refract button lets us load in a normal map. By default, it's just this purple one, but we made one that is matching of our circle. So we're going to use that one. And now I'm going to overwrite it just a little bit so it's a little bit of a white highlight on it. And press select. So now we have raindrop circular splashes that hit the window, and I'm going to put them behind these big ones. And what that's going to do is, if one of these happens to touch it, because this system is behind it, it will also refract those. So while they're not going to blend together like a liquid simulation, they are going to distort slightly. And the only real drawback of this is that these circle ones, they'll they'll spawn like on top of each other occasionally, like there's some right there. And I haven't found a way to fix that yet, other than perhaps just lowering the amount of them so that's less likely to happen. I don't know, I haven't found a good way to fix that yet. Uh, but this is how I would set up, I don't know, window rain. So to go over it all one more time, we have rain coming down in the back, we have rain streaking down the window, we have rain dots, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to lower the lifetime of these to like 1 and 0.5. So now they're just, oh, that's way too fast. So the rain dots kind of just hit the window and splash around. And the rain coming down the window will streak down the window, and we have little rain droplets on the ground. So I hope that's not too complicated. Um, if it is, just watch the video in slow motion. I don't know. Uh, it's just editing particle systems using some of the stock particle systems, and uh, yeah, trying to make them do what you want them to do. Anyways, I hope that helps.